Good afternoon and welcome to Tea Time with Miss Liz. That's right, it's tea time, afternoon tea. And today in the studio, I have Shafar Ben Salom from Lifeboats. And thank you again, Ben. And he's joining us all the way from Israel, I believe. So yeah. I'm gonna share a little bit on Shafar and then he's going to share this incredible organization with all of you viewers out there. So Shafar Ben Shalom is the- Shahaf. Shafar? Shafar? Shahaf. Shahaf. I'm yeah. gonna learn all these different languages, right? <laughs> Shahar Ben yeah. Shalom is the peace ambassador for Israel. He was born in 1977 and he's a social entrepreneur and activist a partner founder of Lifeboats Community Act for Safeguarding. He's a school counselor and family therapist graduated of the Dialogue and Elevation Program in Israel, a lecturer and trainer for couple counseling and parental counseling. In addition, he also trained in child sexual abuse and violent prevention programs. Furthermore, he helps complex trauma survivors and families through the healing therapy progress yet his mission and virtual and therefore a, a pro bono after a decade ago of reading learning and adopting the open dialogue principle in my teachings and everyday life professional practice and working with survivors and their families working with survivors made the activists in his scream for a solution, a crime so common yet so silent. Together with his partners, S.D. Efron, Efron and Nur, Nurz, I can't even say that last name, Nur, <laughs> Nur, <laughs> uh, founded Lifeboats organization, presenting a worldwide and unique community model meant to prevent these acts of abuse. The unique model presents basic principles that can be in implemented in any community around the world and helps shield so many children. These days, Lifeboats is leading lectures and seminars promoting the subject. They are training professionals and communities for an abuse safe environment. My wish is for a day when we as a community will all work together to create a proper environment for children to be safe from being objective and sexually abused physically and emotionally. The more people we reach, the faster we can make the change. And you can check out his social media as well. And I've also placed his group and his Facebook page and his website. So welcome, Shaha. Thanks. Okay, right? Shaha. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can uh, share with all of the viewers out there a little bit on what Lightbulb is and how it started and where do you see it going in the future? Life Oats is very, uh, it's, it's very complicated and simple organization. Um, it started because I was, uh, I, am, I am still working with uh, survivors, um, people who survived uh, complex traumas in their childhood. Uh, I'm working with these uh, amazing people um, almost every day. And it came to me that I can't just help them to uh, to recover. It's too big. It's too uh, it's too important. It's too silent, and that I have to do something uh, to prevent this crime. So, uh, and I'm I'm doing it for like 10, 15 years. Um, and it took me uh, it took me long time and I and many many ideas how to prevent this problem. I, I started by thinking about um, an app, a phone app that kids could uh, just press on the on the red button say somebody is abusing me and then uh, my uh, I have an adopted child she's 25 and she said, um, no, you can't do it, Shahaf, because it's not the child's um, responsibility to say something's wrong. And it hit, it hit me, and I started thinking about how how can I prevent it. It's it shouldn't be that hard, you know. I have to yeah. I have to find a simple way 
that this crime would be prevented. So I started thinking about what's, what makes this crime so vast, so, so common. Like in Israel, at least in Israel, one of every five kids is being abused. That's a lot. And one of the most common, the most common thing about this crime is uh, being silent. You know, everybody is silent. Even the therapists are silent. If, if I'm a school counselor, I was a school counselor, and I know about a child being abused, uh, I can't go public with it. Sometimes I can't even uh, go to the authorities and say, this kid is being abused because the, um, the whole uh, um, police acts and uh, the whole uh, thing is, is so uh, complex and so traumatic as, it, as itself. So sometimes the, the, the children are not, uh, are not ready to cope with it. So you can't just go to the, to the police and say, you know, this kid is being abused because he needs to testify, he needs to tell his story, and sometimes he can't do it. Sometimes even when he's grown up, he can't do it. So silence is, silence and secrets is the most, is the, the, the basic foundation of this crime. So I said, okay, so what do you need to break the silence? So you need dialogue. And, okay, dialogue is easy. You need people to talk, you need people to, but, but what happens, people don't like talking about this stuff. You know, it's hard, uh, they don't want to admit that it might happen in their houses. Um, so, so we need to, we need to encourage people to talk. We need to encourage people to become their logic. And I thought, okay, so dialogue is one thing. What else? What, what else do, do we need? So one other common thing is that it usually, abuse usually happens when, um, when, there are no, when there's no presence, you know? Sometimes there's no parents present, sometimes there's no uh, other people's presence, you know, when, when the parent is abusing. So it might be, uh, it might be alone, uh, when, there, when there's no one around, um, no one needs to know, it's a secret. So you need to uh, increase presence. You need to increase people around. You need to increase people talking about it because presence doesn't only come physically, it comes also mentally. Uh, so, okay, so, so I said, okay, so we have dialogue and we have presence. And, and the third thing we need, we need to act because what happens is that because this crime is so heinous and because people are so afraid of this crime, so everybody keeps quiet and keeps hiding and they don't act, they avoid. So, um, so what we need to do, we need, we need to act, we need to be proactive about it. So we, we came up with these three, uh, three we call it circles of, uh, of protections, of protection. And uh, this is the basic, uh, our basic, um model of of protection we, you you need these three uh circles to protect to protect the child and you can't do it on your own it's not like one person uh mission it has to be the whole community the whole village it has to be the dialogue has to be um uh, in the community people need to talk about it they have to stop be afraid of this crime and they have to talk about it. And when they would talk about it, this crime would, ha would, would happen less. And when they won't be afraid, if you think about it, they, there's usually one abuser who hurts lots of kids. So you have, you have one person, you, all you need is one person in the whole community to terrorize the whole community and everyone would keep quiet. And what we need, we need everybody to talk. And today, even therapists keep quiet because they keep, they want to, um, 
they want to protect their patients because because they don't want their patients to be exposed. So if I'm a therapist and there's a pedophile in in a neighborhood, he's uh, one of the one of the kids dads and uh, kids that goes there are being abused. Um, so I can't talk about it because I would be subjected to a lawsuits and uh, police action because I can't um, talk about someone else. I need to file uh, to file a police or whatever, wow. and, and and they need to interrogate me, and then they need to interrogate the child, and there has to be the, this whole procedure, which is also abusive. So as a as a, a therapist, sometimes I keep silent. And it drives it drives me nuts. I, I couldn't bear it that I I know the sex offenders and abuse offenders are. I, I know where they live. I know where they act. And sometimes I can't talk, and I don't want to hurt my patients. I don't want to hurt the people I'm working with. So it's very very complicated. So, so when, what what are the three? You said there was three categories. For yeah. the abuse, so what three, are the no, three categories? Three, uh, three circles of protections. You oh, have, okay. Three circles yeah, of protection. Yeah, you have this. You have dialogue, because when you when you talk, when you have a place for dialogue, uh, these these crimes won't happen because when there's dialogue, there are no secrets. If I'm a, if I'm a parent or if I'm a, um, if I'm a after school uh, program uh, guide or whatever uh, and I'm and I know how to conduct dialogue and I know how to listen to kids so I would and I could be a listener and kids would know that they can talk to me and they can ask me questions and if something's weird is happening so they can they can ask Shahaf okay so they might tell me that something's wrong. And if I know how to listen, I might see or hear things. You know, if if one kid is, you know, if he's like, uh, if he comes with his abuser or if he just came from being abused or he's, he's being abused at, at, this, uh, at this particular period of time and I would look at him and I would listen to him, I might see that there's something wrong and i might and i might ask him you know well, are you okay okay so and th there ha it has to be these three uh three circles you can't i can't do it without be pre without being present you know i need to be present in this child's life i need to be present when i'm listening to him i have to be present i have to be there i have to listen deeply and that's that's one of the most these are these are the two uh just a second um these these two um two things um they work they work together because when i'm in a dialogue i'm present and when i'm present i can have dialogue i can listen i can listen deeply and I could be. I don't. I don't even have to be um, uh, the dad's, uh, the, the kid's uh, dad. I can be uh, somebody else's dad. I can be uh, one of the friends' dad. I can be one of. I, I can be uh, the teacher. I can be the grocery store, uh, uh, the seller in the grocery store. Um, and if I if I'm a listener, if I if I listen deeply if I look at the kids and I don't look away I would see it and if I won't act if I won't do anything nothing would happen so I'm, I'm going to keep the secret so I have to act they have to to do something now if I'm taking it for a more um, co concrete uh, explanation try to imagine a kindergarten that has a grandma that her job is to look at kids, to talk with them, to, to, to talk with them, and to present them 
uh, feeling safe and being protected, you know, with stories and with uh, um, theater and with uh, movies. And she's a listener and she's looking at the kids and this is her job. This is the only thing, she, this is what she's meant to do and she doesn't need to clean. She doesn't need to, uh, to feed them. She just need to, um, she just need to, to look at them with these glasses, you know, with mm -hmm. this safeness glasses. And if they have a problem, you know, if they have a problem and one of them would come, you know, Hey, I have a problem with my uh, older brother. He's taking my stuff. He's, you know, normal stuff, normal uh, kid stuff. So she's listening. If we, if he wants to tell her about aliens and stuff like that, so she, she's there. She's listening. And if he might say something that would put off a red flag that say, hey, ding, 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 danger, something's wrong. Yeah, she would have someone to the doctor and say, you know. Joseph said something that I'm I'm a bit suspicious. I'm going to I'm going to look at it furthermore. You know, I'm going to so she's present, she's listening, and she's acting. And she needs to have some kind of uh, back office to, to back her up, you know. So yeah. if something's wrong with Joseph, so someone would take this problem and deal with it sensitively and smart and, you know, be there and do the, do the job. And today, social, uh, social services, uh, at least in Israel, is, is working so hard and they are so, um, I would say, uh, under cutbacks, they don't have enough uh, work, uh, work, uh, and and if you if you have a problem and you go to the social services, it it could take you months to to be uh, to get help. And sometimes this help won't come or be ineffective. So this back office needs to be very very solid. It needs to be very very. Um, it needs to be there. It needs to be. It needs to give, to give the, the. And this is ten years from now, because we can't do it today. We don't have the back office. We don't have social services that works, uh, in a way that we could rely on them. So this is ten years from now. So, if we want to get there, we need to. We need the community to say, "Hey, we want that. We want our kids to be protected. We want. Um, we want." these grandmas in in kindergarten we want people to and in order to do that we need the whole community to be active about their their kids being safe did, did you know that there's no um there's no english word for what's in hebrew it says muganut it's a feeling safe okay Okay, so there is no, <clears throat> we couldn't find an English word that would uh, present the, 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 me feeling safe, me, I can go to the street and feel safe, feel protected. So you want to bring this into different communities, right? Yeah. So do you have like a platform? Do you have like an outline of this program? Yeah. So that you can that you can uh, deliver to other communities. Yeah, we have uh, we have this platform. That we can uh, what we want to do. We want to come to a community and teach the communities the basic uh, the basic principles, our basic principles, how to work, how to dialogue, how to uh, how to be present, how to work this out, and we want these communities to be self sustaining. We want these communities to work on their own, use okay. us as a, as a guide, yeah. but work on their own and take take these seeds, plant them, and each community would grow their own uh, uh, their own tree of protection. Uh, 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 um, a community in New York is different than a community in, uh, in Boston or in uh, Canada or in England. 
each community has unique languages, unique uh, norms, unique way of, uh, way of living. Um, one of the most common things in communities is grandmas. By the way, this is not my idea of gr using grandmas. It, uh, I saw a TED talk about a psychiatrist that uh, um, t taught uh, grandmas to help uh, women in, uh, how do you call it, uh, the depres depression after, uh, after birth. Oh, the post-traumatic stress? No, not post-traumatic stress, post-birth. Uh, oh, postpartum. Yeah. So he, uh, he, he said, I'm a, I'm a psychiatrist, I live in Africa. Uh, I can't reach all my patients. And sometimes uh, women with uh, after birth, is, you know, they're depressed, they need someone to treat them. And I can't reach every one of them. And they sometimes they, they don't, they can't afford 10 bucks to, uh, to come to me and they commit suicide. So, so what he did, he, uh, uh, he taught grandmas how to work with them. And they used to sit in uh, playgrounds with a vest and women in de depressed women could go to them and talk to them and they would be there for them because grandmas don't go anywhere they usually stay in the same community uh they live in uh they don't change uh places and they need uh something meaningful to do the communities respect them everybody knows who they are and they have uh and they, they have this you know grandma grimly uh, uh feeling that they give and this idea was like uh an enlightenment to me and i said whoa grandmas this is genius <laughs> so i said i have to take this, i have to use this idea so i said yeah we could we could you know we could teach grandmas to uh to protect kids uh we can take uh school teachers uh social workers uh, psychologists, we could take grandmas that have big hearts and wants to do a change and give them the, the proper education to do it. But as I said, this is, uh, this is like 10 years from now. Now, this, 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 uh, in this um, time, what we do is we, uh, we just present ourselves to the world. This is just stage one. Uh, so one you, you, before the show, you said that you have a 10 year goal for lifeboats, right? So I'm going to bring the website up so you can explain a little bit about the website and okay. why, why you came up with the name lifeboats and what it okay. means to you. Lifeboats are the grandmas. This is like the, so this, this is, is like, where the grandmas come in. Yeah. Lifeboats is the, the end, uh, the, uh, the, the most, uh, like the final, the final stage of, of our, uh, of our model, because if you think about it, what these kids need is a lifeboat. That's it. They don't need anything more than a lifeboat. And what we are doing is something that unfortunately isn't being done by anyone. We want to prevent. We don't want to treat the kids after things happening we don't want to we don't want our kids to be abused and then we would say okay so we know you're being you're being abused so let's take you to a psychologist and they no we want these acts to we want to reduce the numbers we don't want to be one out of five we want it to be one out of 100 one out of, one, out, one out of 200 we know we can't, we, we're not foolproof. Um, pedophiles and criminals and sex abuse, abusers, they would always uh, um, be around, but we do want to make it hard for them. We want, it, we, we want uh, to, to, to give the kids uh, some kind of a protective vest because when, when a kid knows that you listen to him, and when he knows he can talk to you about anything, and when he knows um, he's not being judged, and you won't fall apart if he's if he broke a leg or if he was being abused, so he knows he's protected, and when he knows he's protected, 
he's going outside, okay? He's going outside and he has this vest, this invisible vest that says, I'm protected. Someone listens to me. So you don't mess, you don't want to mess around and, and mess with me and abuse me because I might talk and you might be exposed. And that's that's one hard vest. So I, what, I, what I have up here is your group or your Facebook page. Yeah, this is our group. This is your group. Okay, so yeah. if, any, if anybody wanted to join this group to bring awareness to their community, could they come and could they join this group? Yeah, this is a this is a closed group. They okay. can join in. We have uh, uh, we have a team that answers questions and gives advices and writes all sorts of stuff. Uh, this group is currently being uh, um, in it's currently in Hebrew, but okay. if someone would, might ask a question in English, so we uh, we have English uh, speakers, so they can answer. Okay. And, and I believe you have a Facebook page as well. I'm going to bring that up as yeah. well. So the light bulb is your life saving. For you, a light bulb looks like you're saving a life, right? A child's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So that's where the name comes from, light bulbs. Yeah. Because what, because what people don't uh, don't usually understand is how hard uh, complex PTSD is. They don't uh, understand. They, they, it's very hard for them to uh, to conceive the, the, how hard is this uh, to to um, to cope with complex trauma. Uh, people usually think um, trauma. They they can conceive trauma as, uh, you know, one act, okay, you were attacked, you uh, fell off a tree, you broke your leg. Um, complex trauma is just being uh, known in the world as one of the most complex uh, emotional, uh, emotional situations to be, uh, to be dealt with because someone with complex PTSD is not acting as a normal uh, PTSD they're, they're not they, they won't uh, they won't be triggered like someone with PTSD uh, let's say if someone is uh, broke their leg in um, uh, on the road or they had uh, been in an explosion so maybe uh, if I'm going in the road I might be triggered if I hear an explosion I might be triggered but when I was abused as a kid, and I wouldn't say just sexually abused, but if I was abused as a kid, doesn't matter how, it wasn't a one-time occurrence. It was a long-term occurrence. I grew up to be abused. That was my uh, reality. And just, just as I learned English, I was learned... To be abused so i might not even know that i'm being abused this so is my the, the the thing that i have up now is yeah. your your page right so this mm -hmm. is where the information on lifeboats would be if exactly. anybody would like yeah. to know more okay yeah so i'm just going to bring you right back so we can get you full size so uh, a little bit more on lifeboats what who started it like was it men was it women was it a group of people in israel that wanted to see change like how did it come about well i uh i came i came up i came up with a with a general idea and then on on parallel universes i uh talked with uh neil okay. uh, which is He's a businessman and he's uh, very socially active and he's very he's, he's an amazing person and he helped me to uh, construct the business plan of, of this thing and parallel to that I met Esti she was a student of mine and she was uh, um, I can't say it's secret 
but she was something in the in the, in the army and stuff like that and but she uh, she had a career change and she studied psychology and she's uh, she's working in a, some kind of a, it's um, she's uh, locating uh, teenagers in uh, in distress okay. on the web yeah. and and we met up as a, as a teacher and as a student and she heard about my idea and she started helping me so i said okay yeah i need help <laughs> i can't do it by myself and then she started to be and she's very uh she's extremely uh resourceful and she's very very smart so she started asking me questions and i went okay 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 keep asking me questions keep asking me questions so we started building this whole uh this whole thing i had a a, a a board, a whiteboard at home, so, and I started charting uh, everything, and everything came out from uh, from my head outside. And then we started. Uh, she kept keeping me, ask, uh, uh, keeping me, keep asking me questions, and near uh, helped me to. Uh, she said, okay, now you have to think about what are you doing next. What's your, what can you do? What can you offer? How can you sell? It? Uh, are you going to be a nonprofit? Or are you going to be a uh, a business? Uh, by the way, we we decided to be a business and not not a nonprofit. So, okay. uh, so we uh, so when we work, we are going to earn money and then we are going to live. So we won't be uh, we don't we won't need handouts. We won't need um, uh, government uh, uh, funds that you know they end uh, every uh, four years when there are elections. So everything ends. Um, so we decided to be a business and we decided it's not going to be like a, a company that needs to uh, to exit and stuff like that. No, we are going to be a business. We are going to work for our living and we are going to earn money for what we do. And that, that's how it started. And then we, uh, we had some lectures around and people started joining us. And we have two, uh, two amazing activists that worked with us. Um, and what I, I'm, I'm uh, fulfilling a, a small dream that lifeboats would be a protective uh, place. Uh, most of our activists are survivors. And we have uh, a principle that says, if you need time, you can take your time. Okay. So uh, if, one of, uh, if one of our people is, you know, he's like, uh, he doesn't feel well, she needs to be, uh, she needs her time now, she needs her space, she can't work, okay, that's okay. Uh, she can go, she can take her time, it could be a month, it could be a year. When she comes back, uh, it's her job, it's her place, we're waiting for her uh, as, much as, she, uh, as much as she needs. Uh, another another uh, 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 dream that I have, and I, I, I can't fulfill it yet, but I sure hope I could, is even pay them uh, as they uh, when they need the, the time, so they won't lose uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they won't lose their uh, their ability to to. Uh, so, from what I'm understanding, there's three founders of Lightboats, right? Yeah. So, with those three founders, are any of you guys survivors of abuse? Is this why it's so passionate for you, you three? Um, this is a very personal question. Um, and sometimes, uh, sometimes we're being asked, um, uh, we're being asked like in lectures and stuff like that, are you a survivor? Are you a survivor? And I, I, I think it's pretty unfair because, you know, when somebody is a survivor, they might, uh, they might want to, uh, uh, keep it to themselves. Yep. Um, but we all work with survivors. We have uh, survivors that uh, accompany us along the way. And there was a reason for that question that I asked you, Dan, because I want people to understand that some of these services don't need to be a survivor to create these services. They just have to have the passion to want to save a life. Uh, a lot of uh, mis conception is that it's always in a survivor that are creating these organizations and it's not always true it is somebody who has seen things and wants to make a change 
And that's why I asked you that question is because I want people to understand that these organizations are not always survivors that are starting them. Exactly. Uh, but it does being, uh, it does being um, influenced by our um, work with survivors. Yep. You know, it was, I, most of the work was inspired by working with survivors. You know, when I was a kid, I, uh, I took a, a diving course, scuba diving course. And one of the first thing uh, the, the instructor told us is that all the rules in scuba diving were wrote in blood. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> people tried. People I wanted tried. to try scuba diving, but I don't know about the blood. <laughs> No, it was you know all the all the rules and all the all the learning was 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 after painful death and uh, and 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 stuff like that and th this is exactly what what we're doing we we are taking uh, survivors' experiences and we make their sound we we make make it sound we we give that voice a place and so so. Uh, See, me being a survivor my, myself, and this is why I do tea time and I do awareness and, I bring, and I'm an advocate for abuse, grief and mental health because we need these types of services out there like yours. And I love that you have it as lifeboats because it's not a scary type, like your organization is not scary. Like you don't hear sexual abuse right away. You hear a lifeboat, oh, a boat. It feels, it's, it's peaceful. It's it's relaxing, it's engaging, it's opening to, you know, that openness. I really love your, uh, your perception because what we, uh, what we deal when we are uh, trying to reach people is usually their fear out of this subject, you know? Mm -hmm. And people usually, that, that's one of, one of our most important uh, principles is to have this concept to, to, and the ability to say, I don't know. Yeah. You know, as a parent, I don't know what happened, what happens when my kids go to school. I have no idea what happens when they go to my parents, and I have no idea what happens when they go to their friends. And if I'm saying I know something's wrong, I, I know so I know everything is okay. Yeah, I know everything, I know they're protected, so I'm blind might to, to what might happen and when i when i'm able to say i have no idea okay i have no idea so i'm open to uh to listen to my kids and uh to have the to have this dialogue and they are they are they have this place to say you know i didn't have fun today you know and I, I, and I like that. Maybe maybe eat, eat, what I like that you have that dialogue, right? That you want to make it comfortable so that the children can share, you know? And it's like you said, that intuition, that gut feeling. If you feel like something is off or a person around you or a person around your child, like you notice that that child pulls away from that person, watch those signs. Because those are the things that we need to do is watch the signs. We need to have that dialogue. And and that's what Lifeboats does is that they, they create this safe environment. And it's like a cup of tea, right? The, the flow of the tea is comfort. So light bolts is comfort. And that's what I see. When I seen your logo, when you sent me the logo, it felt comfort. It felt like tea. It felt the flow of the water. You know, each cup is different. Each boat is different. And each story is different. And, and that's what I really enjoy reading and getting to know a little bit about light bolts is that you have that openness, you have that calmness, you have that safe, safeness. Your life is safe in our boat, you know? I have to tell you that uh, when you say it, it's very, uh, it's very moving for me uh, because I don't hear that much, uh, not from uh, strangers. Uh, you're not a stranger anymore, but you know, um, but I, I I do have uh, one thing to say, uh, which is, I think, very, very important. Uh, when we talk about abuse, so sometimes there are no signs. Yep. Uh, sometimes there will, and sometimes you might see the kid, you know, just pull away for a second. 
but in many cases, the kids know exactly what to do and he won't pull away. He would go to the room to do exactly what he knows he needs to do. And this is exactly what lifeboat means. It means don't look for the sign. Because when you look for the sign, you, you, you'll, miss, you, you'll miss something else. Be present. Open the door. You know, see what happens. Worst case scenario, you would find your kid having fun. Yep. And that's what I say. I say that as a survivor when people ask me, what would you have wanted as a child? I would have wanted somebody to even just check it out. Even if it was nothing, check it out. You know, if you feel something is not right, check it out. It's not going to hurt somebody if you check it out. If it, there's nothing that that's, you're doing wrong, then you're just checking. But you're checking. And if there is something wrong, you're saving a life. Yeah, and you don't even have to be suspicious, you know. You could just yeah. bring pizza. Hey, you want something to eat? You know how simple is that? You know, just yep. enter, ask, you want something to drink? You want something to eat? And in 80% of the time, you you would see two kids having fun or a kid having fun with his grandma, his grandpa, his uncle, whatever. And in those 20%, you might save a kid because your kid knows that the door is going to be opened and he's shielded. And even the predator might know that this door is about to be open. So he needs to he needs to watch out. You know, he can't he just he can't do whatever he wants. You know this door is going to be open. And it's like you said, there's not always signs, right? Especially when they're grooming. When a predator is grooming, there exactly. is no signs. Exactly. They want to make that child get to know them really well, feel, oh, you're going to be safe. We're never going to hurt you. And then, boom, they come in like a bomb and they just tear this kid apart. And the kid is confused, you know. So there are not always signs. And during grooming, there is no signs because a predator will look to see how they can protect themselves. Okay, the parent comes at this time. Okay, I won't do anything during this time. Uh, or the grandparent will knock at this time. Okay, we won't do nothing. We're going to just play a game or play a puzzle and do stuff. And then 10 minutes later, grandma and grandpa leave. That predator goes after that child. And sometimes it might not even be uh, aggressive or That's violent. Right. No. It could be very, very gentle, very, very soft, very, very confusing. And... Um, and that's what we need to we need to look at. Yep. And that's why we need to be present and be unpredicted. You know, go well, check. Like, it's like you said, like in the lifeboat, right? There's not a sign. And with the lifeboat, it's on waves. So some waves you'll see, some waves you won't see. You know, and this is and this is how. For me, I look at things differently. And being a survivor, I am a guard. I watch. I watch everything. I watch my surroundings. Everything. If anything feels off, I'm like, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. But as a child, I didn't have that. I was told, no, you will trust this auntie and uncle. You will trust this grandma and grandpa because they love you. What they're doing to you is love. And that's not what they were doing. They were abusing me. But that's all that family knew. That's all my family knew was abuse. And it was a cycle. It just kept passing. So it was like waves. So this aunt won't hurt you, but this aunt will, you know? And, and that's why I, I really was honored when Gallet had sent me you for lifeboats. And I do a lot of research on all of my guests and get to know a little bit more about the, the things. And that's why I translated it into English so I could understand a little bit more about lifeboats and that. And I wanted to get this out there, this message out there, that we need more services like this. Whether you're a survivor or not, we need more services like this. We need that prevention. We need this awareness out there. And I am really, really honored to have you like come aboard and create this, whether you're a survivor or not. And that is personal. And I wasn't asking so that you could say, yes, I am a survivor. Because I want people to understand that not all these services and organizations and foundations need to have a survivor to create these, in, these organizations. You can be just an everyday person who wants to make a difference in a child's life. 
and we need that message out there. So I kind of took tea time a little off into the water, into the waves today. And I want people to understand that tea time here is to bring awareness. It is to advocate change, to make a difference. And this is what Shafar is doing. He is making a difference. He is taking his lifeboats and he is creating change for children. And like you said, there's not always a sign. So don't always look for the signs. Look for those missing waves that don't always get seen. If something doesn't feel right, or you just want to check it out, check it out. You're not hurting anybody by checking. Uh, we need to make that really firm. Check these kids out. Protect these kids because there's so much of it going on in the world. And I and I know that you do life quotes in different languages. What different languages do you do life quotes in? Uh, right now we are doing a. Uh... We're doing it Hebrew. Uh, in the website, we also have uh, Arabic, uh, Spanish, and uh, French uh, explanations. Uh, we have one of the pages uh, being translated uh, to these languages because we think we, we need to do it worldwide. I think one of the most saddest things is that we have no uh, competition. It is sad, right? What? As, much as, as much as we don't want competition, yeah, but for these, these subjects... We yeah. want the competition. Yeah, we want more people to uh, to care about this stuff, to not be afraid to uh, not be afraid to to deal with these uh, uh, situations, and don't be afraid to to talk about these stuff uh, because silence is exactly what bring what what makes it um, more and more uh, um, happen. You know, uh, I have to. I have to add one more thing. Uh, I'm here today. I'm I'm alone here, and uh, this is something uh, I'm not used to, because uh, uh, when we work in lifeboats, we are uh, we are working open dialogue. Uh, I I don't have. I don't know if you know uh, what open dialogue means, uh, but it means we're working together, and we used to uh, we used to talk together. And right now, uh, Esty, my partner, is uh, is only listening, and she's uh, she's with me. Uh, she's with me uh, on uh, on WhatsApp, and, and this is very emotional for me because uh, we're doing this. We're usually doing this uh, together, and we sometimes we even talk uh, to one another. And right now, uh, she 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 wrote me that uh, this this. Uh, this particular talk is very, very emotional for her, and I know for me too. So uh, I just wanted to share because uh, I really miss this uh, this dialogue with her uh, when when we're doing uh, lifeboats. If you'd uh, like, you can send her the link that I've sent you for StreamYard, and she can join us. Uh, I, I I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> she might she might try it in a, in a in a bit, uh, but she she. Uh, she asked me to do it uh, on my own, uh, but usually, and and I really, uh, we usually work together and we uh, talk together and we uh, we reflect on things together, and all of our uh, presentations are being uh, uh, we do it uh, we do it together, and it gives us real strength. And this is something we uh, we even do. Uh, we even want to teach people to do. You know, when you when you work, never work alone. When you, when you work alone, you're uh, you're weaker, and when you work with someone, you're stronger, and you uh, you can benefit from just from the presence of uh, someone working with you. Uh, well, there so, is no change in I. There's a change in we. Exactly. Yeah. So what we want to teach people to do is work together. You know, when a community works together, it's different than working uh, everyone to his own. So, any final words that you would like anybody to know about tea t about lifeboats? Wow, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> as, as what has lifeboats done for you, as a person? Uh, she says she she can go up. You know, she she can go. Uh, so I can I can send her the link. What, yes, what link? The, the stream one that I sent for you to come into the studio. Send her that one. 
Okay, just a second. And we will get her in the studio. And that's how it works. We just bring everyone on to tea time. Okay. Copy link. Okay. And each tea time is different. We do not have a platform, a program platform. Everything is different. And we bring people on as we feel that we need to. I know for me, learning about lifeboats, yeah. it, it really has made an impact in my life. Because I am amazed on all the incredible organizations out there that are out there in the world that are not known about I did not know about lifeboats until I was introduced to lifeboats. So I am really, really, truly amazed. And I believe that this can come to Canada. So we need we need organizations like this in Canada. So we'll have to figure out a way to get get that. I think I think that all every uh, every community for some reason I can't copy the link. Just a second. Copy link address. Just a second. I think that's okay. Okay. Oh, and we have uh, SD joining, right? Is that yeah. who will exactly. be joining? Yeah. Join? I'm, learning, I'm learning all these amazing languages and names that my tongue is like rolling all in different. <laughs> I think it's amazing, you know? <laughs> Yeah, as soon as she jumps into the studio, I'll let her in. So what has it taught you as a person? Um, I think it's actually my first experience working with actual partners, not with bosses and, uh, you know, but partners. Um, it brought me to, uh, to engage and to practice open dialogue in a different way. Okay. And because open dialogue is actually uh, it, it's actually a method uh, working in Lapland for uh, treating uh, people with mental mental illnesses, and we are uh, we are uh, using it for our business purposes and our you know inner inner and outer organization uh, uh, communication. I okay. and so. I really learned how to uh, how to work with partners. How ego has absolutely no place. Each partner brings its own beauty and uh, and own uh, you know um, I forgot the word. Their own uh, flavor. Yeah, flavor and a unique voice. You know. Uh, she tries to communicate, but she can't for some reason. Oh, well, well you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring the whole team back for another tea time. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds nice. So we're going to bring Lifeboats back, the three creators of Lifeboats back on a tea time, and then get you to each share what Lifeboat has brought to each of your lives and that. and. The different aspects of the different ways of how the waves come in for the lifeboat for each of you so what i'll do is i'll create a second tea time for you with all of the creators and i'll get you all on here and then you can share and we'll do that as soon as we can so that we can get lifeboats joined together and what i'll do is i'll do a double show so it'll be part one and part two of lifeboats okay i i think i, I I managed to send her the proper link, and if she just can say hello, and yes, you, for sure, you know, that could be amazing. Uh, if she can make it, it's amazing. Uh, and yeah, we would be honored to uh, to to come to a second show. You know, uh, I'm so excited. Uh, I, I I really really appreciate you starting an organization like this, like a service, because we need these services out there. I can't say it enough. And as a survivor, I can't say it enough. We need services like this. I wish there were services like this when I was a child. You know, uh, and 
and that's what and they're really dear to my heart services like this because you're saving a child's life you might have not saved my life but you're saving a child's life and i want to thank you for creating a service that is doing that saving children's lives because we need more and like you said we need the competition we, we competition is a good thing and for things like this we need that competition we need people to bring a voice to change you know you, you said something that really uh, touched me and reminded me something that i forgot um i said oh <laughs> Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so we have a st in in the in the house now yeah, and he's yeah. also a founder of lifeboats so. yeah yeah i so just wanted you. to say hello i can't stay in the dark when i have to uh, talk about me like that so I can say hello. I, I wasn't as excited as I am now, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's always nice to have that team backup, right? Like, yeah. You're not, you're not like, you don't feel so. And it's like I said, you can't, you can't make a change with I. We make a change with we. And exactly. Teamwork is, teamwork is what is going to make the change and that. And I'm really happy that you joined us, Esti, because it gets me to know a little bit more about lifeboats. And like I told Shafar, Shafar, Shafar? Shafar. <laughs> I, I will say <laughs> that I will have you guys all back on, all of you founders of lifeboats as a part two for tea time and get to know why you all came a part of this and became a lifeboat together. So uh, any final words from either one of you? Or maybe both of you share a little bit on lifeboats before we close the tea time up. I, I think um, I, I'm going to use some of this time and then I would give Esti uh, her place. I think uh, I forgot that one of the meanings of lifeboats for me was uh, a time machine. Uh, and you said uh, that you wished we have lifeboats when you were a kid and I think this is exactly what we're trying to do we are going we, we want to do a change today so people won't regret later and we can change the past but we can change today and today's tomorrow's past and I think this is very very important and ST I'm so glad that you're here <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the first time that we talk in English together, one with other. Um, lifeboat is life, you know, is to make a change and to stop this crime and to talk about things and be, be there for our kids. <coughs> Bring the light. Uh, I like that. And I, li I like how everything flows together. It's just like a perfect cup of tea today. Like, you know, uh, we have these surprises and these waves that just take us in a different direction sometimes. And that's what like Boats does is, you know, and tea time. And it's like a flow, the flow of the water. It, <clears throat> you never know where it takes you. Um, today on tea time, uh, I learned a lot and I got a lot from it. I learned that We're all in this together. We're all making a difference. We all have a story and we all have a life and we all have a lifeboat to save us. So I want to thank you guys for joining me today and I will have you guys all back in, including your other partner for a part two of lifeboats. So I'm going to close this tea time up with what Miss Liz is all about and we will get you back on for part two. Thank you. Thank you very much. Esti, that was very emotional, right? Yeah, very. It was very touching, you know? Me too. Liz, I want to uh, thank you deeply. You're very this welcome. This is going to resonate with us uh, for a long time, I think.